Well, hello again. We are now on Advent Day 2, 2nd of December. And today what I wanted to do was read another Old Testament passage which prophesied about this coming Messiah, this coming Jesus, this coming Saviour. It's in a, a small book in the Old Testament, what's called one of the minor prophets, a prophet called Micah. Who, and what Micah uh, did was he brought God's word to the people at the time, the people of Israel, the people of God, who were living in a way that was wrong, who were living against God's ways uh, in their own land. They were practicing injustice and oppression and all kinds of evil. And God had warned them time and again that if they continued in this way, that they'd be carried away into exile from a power of the day, uh, they'd be taken to Babylon and they'd be carried away into exile out of their own land for for a certain amount of time until they sort of learned their lesson as it were and would be, be, would be brought back in. So he's sort of speaking to them and he's kind of almost promising this punishment that's going to come, this discipline that's going to come as a result of their own sin. Uh, but within that there is a message of hope, there's a message of a grace, uh, God's grace towards his people and how he continually shows them mercy despite Bite themselves, and that includes us today, despite ourselves, that offer of mercy is still there. And over in chapter 5 uh, of that book, there's a lot you could delve into there, but over in chapter 5, you read in verse 1, this is kind of the, the, uh, the Lord saying, Now muster your troops, O daughter of troops. Siege is laid against us. With a rod, they strike the judge of Israel on the cheek, recognizing that this power that was going to come was going to be too way too powerful for Israel. Then there's a but. He says in verse 2, But you, O Bethlehem, Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labour has given birth. Then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall dwell secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be their peace. There's more I could read there, but um, it's really interesting if even you don't even have to have gone to church before to recognize that Bethlehem is important when we think about Christmas because it was where Jesus was born. You may have even done a nativity play where you had to be one of those people that was in Bethlehem. Maybe you were a Mary or a Joseph or a shepherd or a wise man or something. Uh, but we know that that was the place where he came from. And this is surprising because Bethlehem is not significant, it's not a place of power, it's not a place of, um, from a worldly perspective, not a place of royalty. We learn that that was uh, through David's line, Bethlehem was very important and Jesus came from King David's line. But it's not an impressive place, it's not a place you'd expect um, the saviour of the world to come from. And in fact, when we look over into the New Testament, when Jesus is actually born, uh, the wise men, the magi that come looking from the east for this king because they've seen the star. They go, they go and ask Herod, King Herod, because they say, where's the one who is to be born? They assume he would be somewhere. If this king is going to be born, we should probably ask some royalty about it. And what we find is that Herod, although he wants to do away with Jesus, he wants to kill him because he sees him as a threat. Uh, he and the religious leaders of the time, he consults them and says, where is this king who is to be born? And they quote this passage. They say, well, let's look at the Old Testament. And they find that uh, this Jesus was to come from this place called Bethlehem. And so uh, they quote this verse and, and they, they know that they believe that this was where he was going to come from. But this unlikely saviour comes from this unlikely place, this one, this shepherd. In the Old Testament, Lord God himself is described as a shepherd who shepherds his sheep, who are his people, who he cares for his people. And Jesus, when he grew older, would describe himself as the good shepherd himself. He says, I am the good shepherd and the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And that's what Jesus came to do. That's what the shepherd came to do. He came to save his people, but not with the might of an army, not with great power in, in the way we think of that in the world, not with great glamour and um, that kind of human way of thinking of authority. He came with the authority of God, but he came to give himself his life for the sheep and to, that he might become their shepherd. And Jesus really loves his sheep. He loves his people and he loves you this morning, or whatever time of day you're watching this. I realize I said this morning, but it could be any time you're watching this. And um, he is the shepherd who rules over his people and has given his life for us. And so uh, if you're a Christian, just be encouraged today that God is that, of that unlikely savior shepherd. That he came from an unlikely place. Uh, that he's different from the world. He operates differently uh, from the, and thinks differently from the way of the world. 
that he loves us and that he gave himself for us to save us. Maybe if you're not a Christian today, I pray you know that Jesus' love for you today, that he sacrificed himself for you. He's the good shepherd who, who loves you and has given himself for us so that we might be brought back to God, that we might be made right with him, that we might have our sins forgiven. He is our shepherd, saviour, who brings hope into darkness. For these people here, it was a promise of something greater to come, even though they were going to endure this difficult time where they would be taken away. There would be hope for the future. And this shepherd brings us hope for eternal life forever if we put our trust in this great shepherd today. In some ways, this unlikely saviour, but this shepherd who loves us and cares for us. Okay, thank you. We'll see you tomorrow, hopefully.